Hello everyone, welcome back. In the following video, in the soundless video, we will see this position. However, it's gonna be more interesting than it looks. It's considered to be quite solid, but uh, I believe some sparkles might take place. I don't know, I just feel like I can predict the past. So, Without further ado, let's start imitating myself. Hello everyone, welcome back. D4 on the board, D5, playing against German Svorin from the UK. <laughs> and uh, he's playing the Queen's Gambit declined and we have the semi-Tarash on the board. Knight takes e3, b takes e3, c5, and now there is a line that I like. Usually after knight f3 he will exchange the, a pair of dark squared bishops, but I would like to avoid this exchange, and therefore I went rook b1, so that bishop b4 check will be prevented. And he played one of the principal lines, e5, which I believe should grant some advantage to white. And uh, the reason is that here, after queen a5 check, bishop d2, queen e5, my rook on a1 is no longer hanging. And I can afford to play queen c2 without dropping my rook. So I'm protecting e4 while attacking the bishop on c8. However, in the game it took me a few seconds to come up with this uh, move. And uh, knight c6, knight f3. As you can see, white is leading by development. He's attacking the queen. I'll develop my bishop next. Queen c7 took place. And um, now I'm thinking where to develop my bishop. Probably b5 would make sense. And uh, maybe to the center, I'm not too sure. I have a few minutes for the entire game, so I decided to take a bunch of seconds to for this decision. And uh, I decided to go bishop c3. A prophylactic move against the development of the bishop from f8. And uh, now black will probably try to castle long, which feels like it should be in white's favor since I have three open files in front of the queen side. Or should I say on the queen side? In front of the king. So now he's thinking, he has to decide whether he would like to accept my challenge and cast a long or sacrifice a pawn somehow what will German Savorin from the UK play against us? that's right we are in this together bishop g4 so he's going for the long castle he also wants to take on f3 and uh, ruin my structure a bit I'm thinking whether I should play bishop e2 with a solid uh, plus or go for the throat, so to speak, with bishop b5. It was an easy decision. <laughs> but, uh, well, sometimes it's a good idea to just uh, play simple chess if you have a better position. So he played bishop takes f3. So now my king will find it difficult to have safety anywhere on the board. But I have the pair of bish. And after he castles long, he's having a threat. Quite a minor threat of knight d4. Attacking my queen, my bish, and the pawn on f3. And uh, I could castle, but I don't like the idea of uh, black playing bishop d6. So I would just ignore his threat. How smart of me. Ignoring his only threat, which I probably didn't spot. And uh, still not spotting it. And my opponent is making sure that he's, op that he's not hallucinating. And uh, I believe he was right, yeah. His threat did exist. And now after knight d4 is attacking many, many pieces. And unfortunately, there is no way to defend all three effectively. If I want to defend f3 after queen d3, he can take on b5 while attacking my queen with the rook and therefore I have to take it back with the queen and drop the bishop on c3 if I don't protect f3 he will just take it with a fork so this 
position is essentially lost by any standards and uh, there is no salvation as far as I can see Queen d3 is uh, seems to be the lesser evil so I chose to play it hoping that maybe he will go wrong after queen takes b5, queen takes c3 check king e2 avoiding the exchange of queens and uh, I don't know I was thinking maybe he will, my opponent uh, didn't sleep well last night and won't spot the exchange of queens starting either with rook d2 or queen d2 followed by queen d3 check and uh, well he did spot it and now after queen d3 I decided it's a good time to resign since I'm a full piece down and uh, I feel like uh, there is no uh, practical chance to save the game the art of resigning on time is a very difficult one to master and uh, I tried to check my opponent's identity but failed to discover it I will discover where he lives though I'll try to google German Severin and see what happens so after knight f3 queen c2 seems like the right choice and at this point I'm not uh, in the video in the soundless video I wasn't sure so I think I wanted to check it with the engine on ICC and here we go I wanted to show the difference yeah with the another main move is a3 after which cd followed by e5 is correct but then in the same variation the rook on a1 is hanging and then queen c2 is not that powerful so i believe uh, this is an interesting enough demonstration and of course the e4 pawn is hanging and it's not so easy to defend after bishop d3 i believe there is bishop g4 even so exploiting the rook being hanging and now in this move order after queen c2 white is just better and want to verify with the engine unfortunately you cannot see the moves but uh, the evaluation is enough queen c2 is correct knight f3 is correct now i believe queen b2 is a very powerful move by the computer being suggested queen b2 preventing both bishops from being developed it's, it's just brilliant obviously I wouldn't see it probably even if I thought here for I would think here for five minutes straight it's not the most natural but it's extremely powerful preventing both bishops from coming out bishop e2 was a better choice bishop b5 was a little bit uh, over ambitious and now I should have just gone queen a4 with a quite a big advantage uh, it's not a difficult move to spot but I only have to foresee his threat of knight d4 and uh, it's a good advice probably to for everyone here watching us that on every move regardless of the time control if you can afford you should ask yourself what does my opponent want what is he threatening same question two different ways to phrase it whatever feels more comfortable for you and if you can spot the the right threat then our brain our powerful tool called brain will come up with uh, an answer on its own or at least uh, will find it easier to direct itself so I hope you enjoyed this was the last piece of soundless video being uh, I don't even know the word redone let's say after the fact and uh, hopefully from now on I won't forget to set the microphone on while recording and we'll be able to just play the game and go on to the next game and to the next game and record on a more regular basis and uh, now is January 22nd we just wanted to mention and uh, the game was played on January 11th I believe and uh, I'm going to play in Moscow open in uh, about uh, five or six days from now and uh, I won't have much time I'll try to record in the next 
days a few videos in advance so I can keep releasing them while uh, attempting to win the tournament. It's a nice way to put it because I'm uh, probably going to be the 20th seed. And uh, I actually haven't booked the flight yet. So there are chances I won't officially play eventually. But um, yeah, I'm really eager to play some chess. Last year I only played like five tournaments and it's really, really bad when uh, chess is my only job. So I'm going to attempt to play at least 10 tournaments this year, if not more. And uh, on this uh, aspect, I'm also going to add more details soon of how the viewers here might be able to uh, support me in the process of uh, being a more active chess player and hopefully more successful one day. So I hope you learned something from this video or at least uh, enjoyed watching it. And if you want to learn some more, then keep watching the next videos.